There's a lot of resistance in this retainer. Is it worth it not 40% off? What's going on? How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name's Rex. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how I went from zero Casios to three Casios in under a month. So we're going to go over how and why I came to choosing these three Casios. So here we are with three watches. I'm making this video because it was quite a journey. So I'm not a huge watch guy, first off. I mean, I've got a watch box, and yes, it's full. I've actually got a couple that don't fit in here, but that's a story for another video. I had no Casios, and within three weeks, I had three. And here's how that all started. In about a week and a half from making this video, I'm going away to the Caribbean for a wedding. And up until a couple of years ago, I kind of wore whatever watch I had. I didn't really care. Until I learned that some of my watches are going to need service soon. Also, I've got young kids now and will be playing in the sand and doing a lot of roughhousing. I was born mid 80s and grew up in the 90s. So the first thing that came to my mind was, hey, G-Shock. I had seen a much older cousin with an original square G-Shock, didn't care, too young. But in the 90s, when I was older, I had a closer cousin who got one of those 90s round G-Shocks, which was super cool. Back then I did want one, now not so much. And I thought, hey, let's grab a $50, 50 Canadian dollar G-Shock watch and be done with it. So I hopped online to update myself on available G-Shocks. And to my surprise, they weren't 50 Canadian dollars and there was way more option than I had thought. And me being the cool things lover that I am, I was quite overwhelmed with what was available. And that's the moment I thought to myself, hey, let's take this a little more seriously. If I'm going to get a G-Shock, let's get something a little bit nicer. And I had a look at a few of the metal square G-Shocks, but this one with the negative face really, really caught my attention. Not interested in the black or the other colors. I do like the one with the full metal band, but I don't like that it's a positive display. The much more expensive one with the titanium band and titanium construction with the red line, I also like that, but I wasn't going to spend that on a G-Shock as my first one. So I ended up with this, but I did the reverse of what I should have done and what I normally do. Typically before I buy something, I'll do YouTube searches, Google searches, find reviews, find thoughts, find opinions, the good, the bad, everything. And that's when I found a whole bunch of watch channels that sent me down a spiral of Casio stuff. Thanks a lot, watch channels. So this was still being delivered on the way when I came to the conclusion that this is, might be too nice for me to dig into the sand. Yes, I get it. It defeats the purpose of a G-Shock. A G-Shock supposed to be worn, used, and abused. Well, maybe not. Not Maybe not this one. Maybe I'll get another G-Shock soon that I can abuse. So then that brought me back online looking for cheaper alternatives. Something I can just literally use, abuse, get scratched up, and maybe even toss out over there. So back to the internet I went. So I started searching for not only G-Shock, but Casio in general. And I found the world time. And for 40 Canadian dollars on Amazon, I thought you can't go wrong. I didn't order it yet though. Luckily on a trip out to Walmart with my kids, I stopped in the watch aisle and found this guy for 36 Canadian dollars. Plus taxes, of course. But of course at this point, I was already spiraling down the rabbit hole. And I was looking at some ProTrack, Mudmasters, Golf Masters, and all those other ones with sensors. But realistically, the only two sensors that I really cared about was a compass and a temperature sensor, which landed me my third Casio. This twin sensor SG600WH, something B dash something something. I'm pretty sure I forgot to mention this is the DGGMWB5600-C, I think. And that is an AE1, AE1200, I don't know. Something, something. I'm not a watch guy, I don't really know. But it's on the screen somewhere. And because I'm quite a geek, I almost even bought one of their green negative display calculator watches. And I started saying, well, while I'm away, maybe I could use the calculator to calculate currency exchange. At this point, I was just making up all kinds of random excuses so I could buy more watches. Because although they're not 50 Canadian dollars, they are relatively inexpensive for what you get and at this point it's like buying candy i had to hold myself back so these are the three casios i have so the first one i purchased was this gmwb 5600-1 i believe and as i said before i purchased it for the negative display i really like the display and the metal one thing though is for some reason i didn't think or notice that this was so polished i thought it was all brushed like this bezel but it's not, I should have watched some YouTube videos first because after I did the purchase and it started shipping to me, I did watch videos and many people were saying it's a fingerprint magnet and does scratch up, but that's okay. I won't be doing anything too rough with this specific one. I will say I'm not in love with the band. It does have a nice retainer, but nothing special to me. So I'll be looking at putting something on it and I'm not sure what to put on it or what looks good with this. Maybe get a metal band, I don't know. So the reason I chose a 5600, two main reasons. Solar power and multi-band. Bluetooth is cool too, but I didn't really care about that. 
a multi-band feature, gimmick, whatever you want to call it. I'm a, I'm a bit of a geek and I like that. I also like the auto light feature, which I don't have on right now, but when you tilt it 40 degrees, it turns on the light and the light, uh, you, you probably can't see it. Love the brick pattern around here. So my main reason for this specific one was purely aesthetic. But for the model was because of the solar power and the multi-band. Also, it's got all these other features like world time, five alarms with the sixth one, which is a snooze, I believe, or the fifth one's a snooze. Of course, your stopwatch, your timer. I love the watch. Apparently, I don't have to change the battery for pretty much a long time. It looks really good. And it brings me back to the days when I really, really wanted a G-Shock, but I was too young. Only my older cousins got them. Well, now I'm a man with a family and I got my own G-Shock. But like I said, this was way too nice to take with me. So I ended up ordering, I mean, picking up at Walmart, this one. And the reason I picked this was because it's super basic. Now the light isn't so great. It's just, uh, but good enough. But because I'm a bit of a geek, I really like these two display windows here. You get the map because it's a world time and the map shows you which time zone you're currently on, whatever you've selected. Up here is an analog clock with the seconds ticking. So that means when you go into these modes, world time, which I, I probably don't, I'm not gonna use, alarm, timer, stopwatch, you're always going to be able to see the time. So that was pretty cool to me. Of course, that feature is available on the higher end G-Shock. You know, all these watches come with the alarm. It's actually come in handy. Morning alarm, I don't really need. I use my phone. This is not loud enough, but this is great to remind me of things like now I'm intermittent fasting. It reminds me of when I've got to start my meal and when my eating time is about to end. It also reminds me to pick up the kids. I've even thrown in a water break. Didn't think I'd have a use for a timer, but I do. I use it now to make sure I don't overcook my food. I did go ahead and attempt to change the band on this. I just went for one that would come real quickly and I kind of regret getting this one. I mean, for $22, Canadian shipped to me plus taxes. It's not terrible. It worked. And I chose this one because of how it meets with the outside of the lug. These Casio seem to have really small uh, spring bars, which doesn't allow for a lot of option. But I have seen guys do 20 millimeter NATOs and slice or cut away some of the excess material to get them to fit. Anyway, I'm changing this definitely at some point soon. So I got this one because it looked cool and it was cheap. I don't like it because this is like some plastic that seems like it'll easily scratch as opposed to the mineral glass on the G-Shock or the sapphire crystal on the even higher end titanium version of this. And that's when I hopped back on to look at watches and started finding Protrex. But I wasn't yet ready to pick the Protrex that I wanted. And then I saw this, which was much smaller. I had a couple of options if I wanted only a twin sensor, which I did want the compass and I did want the temperature. I also wanted solar power, which is what made me look at Protrex. But like I said, we're not ready for that yet. The other options from this were SGW100 models, which weren't really for me. I like the look of this one much, much better. I have to say, these two watches are very light. This one is incredibly heavy, making me want to get a metal band for it, just to balance the weight out. It is quite heavy. It's a lot, it's noticeable. It's heavier than I expected. I mean, I do have heavier watches, but this was heavy and I hadn't worn a heavy watch in a long time. I've been wearing a lot of dress, I've been wearing a lot of my automatic dress watches. So this has uh, another cool feature. The light is not just a basic orange one like the other one. However, I did pay much more. This was 75 Canadian dollars as opposed to 36. And this, I didn't pay full retail for this. I purchased this on Black Friday, and I believe it was 40% off. And the regular price was, I think, $650 or $600 or something, or 500, 500, I think. Let's have a look at this light. I like this one. And it's got the, the negative display, the negative display that I like. I love negative display. I know it's harder to read, and yes, it is harder to read in actual reality, but this was just so cool. You see the negative, and then you've got the world map and the positive, and you've got your little compass thing here. Let me see. You're supposed to have a compass flat when you read it, but when you push this button, boom, you get a compass and temperature. I love this thing. The band doesn't look as bad as what came on the World Time. It does have some sort of design. It looks kind of cool. I did try putting that band on this, but the lug on this watch specifically forces your strap to go downwards, which didn't work that well with that strap. So I am going to have to find another strap for this or get adapters and just run a NATO band on this guy. That's probably what I'm gonna do. A downfall to this is right here. The glass on top is also a plasticky resin like this, very easily scratched, not a mineral glass like the G-Shocks. But what do you expect for a 36 Canadian and 75 Canadian? These watches all wear very well, I think on my, on my wrist. I have a eight inch wrist. You'll see there, it forces the strap down. Very good looking watch, good size. 
Great for some light adventures outdoor. The battery does only last five years as opposed to the 10 on this one and the 25 or whatever it is on this guy, given that you put it in solar power to keep it charged. This watch wears really nice as well. I've been wearing this actually often because I'm trying to break in this strap. The strap came pretty stiff. I'm trying to loosen it up. This watch looks really good as well. Nice fit, nice design, good size for my tiny wrist. Oh man, this one's very top heavy. I'm sliding the rest of the strap into the retainer. There's a lot of resistance in this retainer. I mean, it's, it's a regular G-Shock looking strap. That's, that's what I'm not a fan of. It's like a $500 watch and you're getting a regular and I mean you do get this nice retainer and the stainless brushed look but the watch fits I think really well my wrist is a little small I don't know what to do with this I think a metal band would help that a lot help bulk up the uh, the look of my wrist what do you guys think I definitely need another band for it and that's the stories of how I got my Casios and I've been liking it so much that I found a baby G for my wife that they don't make anymore from kickscrew.com. So I'll uh, make another video about that one when we get it. I'll put a link in the description to each one of these watches on Amazon. However, this one, like I said, I did buy this on Black Friday at 40% off. Is it worth it not 40% off? I don't know. That's up to you. Would I rebuy this if it was not 40% off? Maybe. Maybe I would. I'm not sure. Thanks for joining me. Make it a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.